morning everyone welcome once again to Quekumigos TV and today we are here in the Laura Municipal Education Directorate and we are in the office of the PRO in person of Mr. Yaya Zakaria and today we are here to talk about pension good morning sir uh, good morning and thank you for having me this morning I'm grateful to you for being here this morning I hope we are going to have a fruitful deliberation about our pensions today Thank you very much for hosting us here. So, sir, um, today we are all about pension, pension, pension. So, we want to know, we want to know, we want to dive in a little bit. If we say somebody is on pension, what does it really mean? All right, thank you for the question. Yes, in Ghana, when we talk of pension or anywhere else, especially in Ghana as it is, uh, the first thing we think about is somebody is 60 years and above or somebody is working and has gone home to rest after working for some time. So in Ghana, before one can go on pension, then you need to be 60 years and above, or somebody too can go on pension when you are uh, 55 and above, and that is what we term as voluntary uh, pension. Then somebody too can go on pension due to what we call invalidity. Invalidity simply means that you are working and you are in, involved in an accident or something that renders you incapable of working again. So at that time, you can also go on pension. Thank you very much for the in-depth um, description of our pension scheme. Okay, sir. So as we dive inside, I want to also ask you this question. Um, how does the pension scheme in Ghana, how does it work and how does it look like? And we say pension scheme, when we talk about pension scheme, how does it look like? All right, thank you very much for the question. Yes, in Ghana, before uh, the year 2010, we're running a pension scheme that was uh, regulated by PNDC law 247. And that pension scheme mandated Senate to take care of both our uh, mental pension and our lump sum. But uh, the Parliament of Ghana or the Government of Ghana uh, brought in a new pension system or a new pension scheme, which is now a three-tier pension scheme. So we have a tier one, tier two, and tier three. Now this pension scheme is regulated by an Act of Parliament, which is Act 766. So this Act came into being in the year 2020, uh, sorry, in the year 2010. So since then, we have been on this uh, pension scheme, which is the three-tier pension scheme. That is what is run in Ghana. Okay, okay, very, very well. Okay, Mr. Yaya, um, there is this thing that is also on our mind as your T-shirt you are wearing, GS Occupational Pension Scheme. That is just up. Um, we want to know it, if it's really about teachers or it's about people in education. How is it? How is it? How is the framework of GSOP? Okay, thank you very much. As you said, GSOPs is a short form for Ghana Education Service Occupational Pension Scheme. Now, it is uh, an employer sponsored occupational pension scheme licensed by MPRA, that is National Pension Regulatory Authority, in the year 2012. Uh, GSOP, as the name indicates, is for uh, workers in the educational sector, both teaching and then non-teaching staff. Now, GSOP has a board of about 15 uh, members. Uh, we have government appointees as part of the board. We have the uh, teacher associations as part of the board, and we also have an independent member on the board of GSOP. So GSOP is solely responsible for uh, our tier two pension scheme, and that is for Ghana education service worker, both teaching and non-teaching staff. Thank you. Another question that I need to ans ask you, it's very important. Um, how can one assess his tier one or tier two pension? Okay, thank you for the question. As indicated earlier on, uh, tier one and tier two are compulsory pension schemes which you and I have no choice but to be on by law. So with tier one and tier two, uh, we have a maximum of 18.5% of our basic salary being contributed towards tier one and tier two. Now your employer, in this case that is government, will usually contribute 13% of that 18.5, and then you as an employer will add 5.5% of your basic salary to make up the 18.5%. So 
Now, as we said, it is uh, compulsory, and you can only access tier one and tier two when you are on pension. And we already said that before you can be on pension, that you must be 60 years and above, or you can go on voluntary pension when you are 55 years and above, or due to what we call invalidity, that is when you are incapable of working again. Now, out of this 18.5% we talked about, 13.5% of it will go to Senate for them to manage for your mental pension. You know when you go on pension, you are supposed to be receiving mental pension from Senate. So the 13.5% out of the 18.5% goes to Senate for this purpose. Then the 5% is given to GSOPs in this case to manage as your tier two. So GSOP also picks this 5%, invest them into uh, 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 businesses that can yield something for you when you go on pension. So by the time you go on pension, then GSOPs will also be responsible for giving you what we call your lump sum. That is the bulk money you will receive when you go on pension. Yes. Thank you very much. And I would also ask this question. Can I access my tier 3 pension anytime I want? Like, if I want to access it, can I access it anytime I want? Okay. Now, with tier 3, as I said earlier on, it is a voluntary pension scheme. So, as a member of uh, 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 GES, you can decide to join any uh, voluntary pension scheme that you want. Now, you have the option of using up to 16.5% of your basic salary for uh, the voluntary pension, that is tier 3. Now you can use 1%, 2%, up to 16.5%. The good thing about the voluntary pension scheme is that you are given some rebate by government. In this case, it is tax-free. So any amount at all you pick out of the 16.5% to use for your tier 3, government does not tax that amount. In this case, what it means is that when you go into tier 3, you can only assess it after 10 years. Now here is the catch. Because government is giving you tax or tax free for that amount, you are only allowed to save for 10 years before you can assess money. If you want to assess the money any year below 10 years, then you will have to pay some penalty for assessing the money before 10 years. So yes, you can assess the tier 3 anytime you want, but there's going to be a penalty on your money when you want to assess it before 10 years. Thank you. Thank you very much for that education. So if you need to assess your tier 3, it needs to be above 10 years. When it's not 10 years, you pay a penalty. Thank you very much sir, for that education. Thanks for so much insight today. Okay, sir, can I ask a question? Um, if I leave, um, ca how can I have my contribution if I leave this uh, GS? Example of like, I want to leave uh, the education service, okay? And my contribution is with uh, GSOP. How can I get it? Now, um, as we said, for your tier one and tier two, you don't have access to it. If you are leaving GES to another government institution, what can only be done is what we call porting. That means you transfer your tier two to a new scheme. Because wherever you are going, they should also have a tier two pension scheme. Whether it's the health sector or whatever, they should also have a tier two pension scheme. So you only go to GSOPs and then they'll port or transfer your pension, the tier two pension, to your new uh, employer so that uh, they can start now uh, managing your tier two for you. Okay, so this question is on my mind. So are we saying that the GSOP is also term as tier two? If we say GSOP, is it the same as tier two? Okay, thank you very much. As I said, GSOP is only a pension scheme. They only regularly manage your, pen, your tier two. Okay. Now, if you go to other sectors, there are other pension schemes. So in GES, we have GSOPs managing our tier two. Okay. So if you go to other sectors, they might also have their own schemes that manages their tier two. Yes. Thank you very much. Because that one, I needed to ask that question. Okay, so this question also is, um, how can I access my tier two when I go on pension? For now, I'm working. So when I go to pension, I want to access, is it going to be a little bit of difficulty or it will be very simple for me? How can I do that? 
Uh, all right, thank you very much. If you go on pension, the first thing you need to do if you want to assess your pension is to contact your uh, association. Either you are with NAT, NAGRAT, or CCT. Contact them. They will be able to direct you as to what to do. Or you can also go to your education office in the municipality or district in which you work. There they will also be able to direct you as to the forms and other things that you need to fill in order to assess your tier two, which shouldn't be any uh, thing uh, 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 difficult for you to do. Yes. So let's say if there is a contributor, okay, and the unfortunate happen, we are not saying it should happen, maybe that contributor passes away, how would that person's beneficiaries be able to assess his tier two? Okay. So currently, um, GSOP is uh, undertaking a nationwide uh, registration of members to ensure that uh, we have the data of all members. And this is to ensure that your beneficiaries are captured so that when the unfortunate happens, GSOP has information about you, has your data, your bio data, and all that. So your beneficiaries will be in their system. So the simple thing is for your beneficiaries to get in contact with uh, GSOP and to use the lay down procedures and then laws of Ghana to ensure that your beneficiaries will get their uh, uh, pension or the benefits that you have left behind for them. Thank you very much. This one is also an education for uh, most of the people outside there. Not only the contributors of um, uh, GSOP or Tier 2, because if a beneficiary doesn't know this, how to go with this, it will be very difficult for him or her to also assess the contribution. Okay, so I want to ask this question. Why is um, GSOP ruling out the nationwide capture of the buy data of members? All right, thank you. This is a very important question. Now, currently, GSOP has some data or some amount of data on uh, GES workers, and this data is straight from the employer, that is uh, GES, or uh, from uh, CAD, that is a uh, controller. Now, what GSOP has realized is that in some cases, some of these data are inadequate, and in some cases, too, they are inaccurate. So in order to ensure that GSOP has a complete database of all its members, and GSOP is currently having about 400,000 members. 400,000 members, you see? Yes. Wow. 400,000 members. So to ensure that they have a complete biodata of all members, GSOP has decided to roll out this nationwide capturing of the biodata of all members. And currently, it is starting with uh, three zones. Currently, we have uh, uh, Upper West Region, Volta Region, and then Ashanti Region. A pilot was first done. Then after the pilot, the zoning also continued. So currently, as I said, there are three zones working currently. That is Upper West, Volta Region, and then Ashanti Region. As I said, simply this is to ensure that GSOP has accurate and adequate data of all members. Thank you very much. So as we in the Laura Municipal, that our data needs to be captured, what are the requirements? What are the things that we need to bring when we are about to uh, have our data captured? Okay, so currently, uh, before you can have your data captured, we, one important thing is your Ghana card. We all know the importance yeah. of Ghana card now. So you need to go, to, if you go to see your rep, to capture your data, you need to go with your Ghana card. You also have to ensure that you have the names of all your beneficiaries, then have the date of birth of all your beneficiaries, their residential addresses, their phone numbers. Now, in some cases where the beneficiaries are minors, then you need to use the phone number of a guardian, either an uncle, the husband, or a wife, grandmother, any person that can, you can contact in case you want to contact that particular uh, beneficiary. Okay, so when you're also going, you need to go with your residential address. You need to know your residential address. You need to know the full name of your mother and then the full name of your father. You need to know your email. 
you need to have your contact with you. You need to have your Ghana card number, which in this case will be on your Ghana card. And then I think these are some of the things that you need to have with you when you are going to have your data captured with a GSOP rep in any of the districts. So thank you very much. And if I may ask, who is our GSOP rep in the Laura Municipal? Yes. Uh, I'm Yahya Zakaria, the PRO for the Municipal Education Directorate, and I'm currently the GSOP rep for Lara Municipal, uh, Lara Municipal. So anyone who wants to have their data captured in the Lara Municipal will have to come to me for me to do that for that fellow. Yes. Okay, so if you want your data to be captured, just step in the Laura Municipal Education Directorate and visit Mr. Yaya Zakaria's office. He's a PRO stroke the gist of the rep. Thank you very much for your time, sir, and have a nice day. Thank you very much for having me, and I hope we can uh, uh, have uh, many future endeavors together. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much.